congrats again on your fantastic score. You ended up with a 170, right? Yeah, that's correct. And where would you say you started? Like, what was your starting point? What was your starting diagnostic score if you had one? I started at a 153. Wow, that's quite a score increase. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Well, thanks so much for doing this this brief call with me. I just kind of wanted to do a debrief with you after after your LSAT journey, just to do a little recap and get a sense of what you think might have led to your score increase, what advice you might have for future test takers, anything along those lines you might be willing to share. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, feel free to ask me any questions. Yeah, sure. Well, what do you say is the biggest thing that had the biggest impact on you in achieving that score increase in the end? Uh, yeah. So let me start from the beginning. So I would say I started heavily investing in this LSAT process um, in March this year. I took my diagnostic in October last year, but wasn't really committed to the process, I would say. Um, I kind of looked through a few kind of test prep books, um, but it was all self-studying. Um, and then I would say March was when I really started committing to the process. And that's when I found um, your test prep company. And um, through that, I registered for, I think it's the Supreme course, which allows me to um, have, you know, these mastermind coaching sessions. And those, I think those were pivotal to the breakthrough that I had in terms of score increase. Um, so I looked through your kind of foundational material and then, you know, your mastermind classes of being able to ask my questions freely in class and having the contribution of not only you, but also um, experienced students, but also students who were also in my stage of prep um, and just giving me advice, giving me kind of little pearls of wisdom that they got along the way um, that really helped me out a lot. Awesome. Fantastic. I'm so glad the mastermind sessions in particular were were useful to you. And I'm really glad that you mentioned that because I feel like it's something I'm not really uh, able to sufficiently communicate the value of. And this is something that has kind mm -hmm. of arisen organically through the participation of students like yourself. And so mm -hmm. I'm hoping you could share a little more about what exactly goes on in those mastermind calls that you found so valuable. During this time, you know, you're know, you free to ask any sort of question that you may have during the time of your prep. And, you know, you would pitch in and give us advice and um, all the other students would kind of pitch in. So one example of, um, I think this was one of my first breakthroughs. So I was struggling with logic games, um, especially when it came to timing. And, you know, I put this question to the class, how do I improve on timing on logic games? I'm always running out of time. And um, one of the students, you know, just said, oh, um, instead of doing the questions by order, do them, do all the, I think she said, do all the local questions first and then go back to the global because then you kind of get um, more information as you go through. Um, and that was really, really helpful to me. So I implemented that strategy and, you know, by the end of, I would say like a week and a half of practicing that strategy, I was able to complete the logic game section on time. Um, as opposed to before where I was taking, you know, anywhere from 40 to 45 minutes. Amazing. Uh, it's a great, it's a great tip. Definitely. I recommend something along those lines as well. And you also met Judy through the course as well, right? Yeah. So we're still, um, you know, we're communicating every day. She's applying this cycle as well. So we've kind of become, you know, like diehard buddies <laughs> um, who just are supporting each other through this process. Um, and I think that's the other really great thing about your community where, everyone's just so caring and they're so open. Um, and so she's, yeah, Judy's one of the friends that I've made throughout this process. And we really, really helped each other out um, throughout both LSAT prep and now also getting into applications. Awesome. What would you say Annie has opened up for you as a result of getting this score increase 153 to 170? What new possibilities do you have in terms of your law school admissions and your, your law school future? Well, I mean, I'm applying mainly to T14 schools. Um, obviously, you know, T14 schools, you know, that shouldn't be the goal of everyone. It depends on what your ultimate career goals are. But I plan to practice um, more internationally just because of my upbringing and my background. Um, so T14 schools, for in my view, would definitely give you kind of more opportunities, especially overseas as well. Um, so, yeah, so I think getting that 170 definitely makes me a lot more secure in terms of applying to those um, T14 schools. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, I'm really excited for your possibilities there. Thank uh, you. Of course. Uh, any other advice you'd have for students studying for the LSAT now? Uh, hmm. I would say one of the tips 
that's, you know, front of mind for me is definitely avoid burnout. Um, that's definitely very, very real. And I exper experienced it myself. Um, I think you read all these things about burnout and, you know, you're aware of it and you don't think it's going to happen to you because, you know, it's just, you're, you're like, okay, I'm taking it easy. You know, it's not going to happen to me. But at the same time, when I experienced it, um, it happened very quickly. So there weren't any kind of warning signs beforehand and it just happened. One day I went from, you know, PTing within 170 to mid 170s to, you know, low 160s. Um, and that's when I kind of found out, okay, like I'm really burnt out. My brain isn't processing information properly as it should be. Um, so that's one of the things I would watch out for, um, just to make sure to pace yourself, give yourself enough time um, another advice I would have is just really to trust the process. Um, I think different score ranges, there's different things that you have to focus on. And um, I think it's easy to plateau in this process. Um, and it's easy to kind of lose trust in yourself and to not believe that, you know, you're capable of achieving the score that you want. But at the same time, I think, um, get advice from people, uh, get advice from people who, you know, are in the same process and different stages of this process and that are really push you through. Great advice. Thanks so much for this, Annie. And so I'll definitely, yeah, no please problem. keep in touch and let me know if there's any way I can support you at all moving forward with your applications. And of course, let me know how it turns out. Yeah, no problem. This is probably my fourth or fifth uh, group coaching call, and I, I can say confidently that every single one of these calls that I've been on, I've um, received really great feedback, and I have taken that advice away, and it has improved my score. So, you know, an example of this is, you know, one of my first grouping calls, um, group coaching calls, I came with a problem of increasing speed on logical reasoning and you know 20 or so students pitched in um, gave me advice and said one of them was you know maybe do some of the local games first and then come back to the must be true questions later and that way you can eliminate more of the answer choices I took this away applied it and you know like a week or two later um, I didn't have an issue with this anymore and that has been um, pretty consistent um, in terms of the advice that I've gotten back um, from this group and I think uh, another great uh, value of this group is the fact that everyone is so um, willing to be vulnerable here and to share their weaknesses, to share their struggles, um, just to share what's going on outside of just LSAT, but what else is going on in their life that might affect LSAT. Um, I think it's, it's so crucial for people to share that just because when you're studying at home, you don't know what's really going on with um, other people. You don't know if you're doing something right. You're reading these books, you're reading, you're um, watching these videos, and you don't necessarily know whether or not you're going to get the score that you want. And there's a lot of self-doubt um, in that process. And I think to just hear other people who are going through the same thing, um, that gives a lot of peace of mind. And just to know that you're not going through it alone, that helps a lot with just the process um, going forward. And I think um, I've heard a lot of stories here with the group coaching class. You know, there are people who have young children and there are people who, um, you know, have been out of school for 20 years and have put their entire lives on hold. Um, just to do this and have devoted, you know, months and limited resources um, to this process. So that puts everything into perspective for me. You know, I kind of think if all of you can do such amazing things and to, um, you know, get over these sort of obstacles, then, you know, why can't I just go on another day and study a little bit more if I didn't get the score that I wanted or, you know, I got another mistake on my logical reasoning section. Um, so yeah, I've, I've taken a lot out of this group and it's, um, I'm very thankful to all of the students who are still willing to share all of their experiences and to give me advice. Um, and I've made some very great friends out of this process and that's something I'm also very grateful for. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them and feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.